Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about the inverse trig functions and what you should memorize. And we are going to start with inverse sine. So I've written inverse sine, but you might also hear me refer to it as arc sine because inverse sine and arc sine are interchangeable terms. Um, and uh, it's a little easier to say arc sine, so I tend to say that more often. The first thing that you really want to memorize about it is what the graph of arc sine looks like. So you want to know how to set that up. So we have an x and a y axis. On the x axis, you're going to go from negative 1 to 1 and also put tick marks at negative 1 half and positive 1 half. On the y axis, you have to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And um, we're going to count by uh, just pi over 6s. So it's pi over 6, uh, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6. But the only ones that we're really going to label are pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, so the graph doesn't get too cluttered. And now there are five key points. So I'm going to put those in. And then we want to get the shape right. So just kind of sketch your curve through there. It's actually kind of hard to get that shape right, um, but do your best. And the five key points that we showed here are just really where the x coordinate is a rational number. And so that's going to be negative 1, negative pi over 2, negative 1 half, negative pi over 6, 0, 0, 1 half pi over 6, and 1 comma pi over 2. So those are the points that have rational x values. There are a bunch of points. Obviously, there's an infinite number of points. There are some other important values that you need to know for arc sine, but we're not going to highlight those on the graph. So it's five key values. The ones that I didn't show are um, where the x coordinate is not rational, but you happen to actually know the value. So negative radical 3 over 2, negative pi over 3, negative radical 2 over 2, um, negative pi over 4, and then the positive versions of those. So those don't get highlighted on the graph, but obviously they're there. Um, so that's the actual graph of arc sine. There's also a very useful unit circle figure. If you have the unit circle memorized, which you definitely should. So it's really just quadrant four and quadrant one of the unit circle. So I'm going to draw that. And then um, when you think about this, we have these points. So those are the ordered pairs that you've memorized with the corresponding angles. The only thing you have to do is you have to think of the fourth quadrant instead of uh, you know starting at 3 pi over 2 and going from there. Start thinking of it as negative pi over 2 going up to 0. So it's negative pi over 2, negative pi over 3, negative pi over 4, negative pi over 6, 0. And then this up here is still pi over 2. And when you use this figure, I'm going to kind of explain how I use it. But when you use this figure, you want to focus in on the y values because on the unit circle, the ordered pairs are cosine sine, so the y values are the sines of the angles. So knowing the unit circle, we just have to kind of reverse the way you have it memorized. So for example, if we want to think of the inverse sine of negative 1, that's going to be negative pi over 2. So if you go to the unit circle figure, you're thinking the y value should be negative 1. So in this figure, what angle corresponds to a y value of negative 1? It's that point at the very bottom, so it's negative pi over 2. Then we can think about inverse sine of negative radical 3 over 2. That's going to be negative pi over 3. And if you think of the figure again, negative radical 3 over 2 is uh, as close as you can get to negative 1 for a famous ratio that we know without being negative 1. So it's got to be the next point down there. Um, and there you go. So then there's actually nine of these that you're going to just totally memorize. So the ones that I'm writing right now, you completely want to have memorized. You don't want to have to think about them. But the unit circle figure is incredibly useful for other problems we'll do. And also when you're first memorizing, it's really useful. And later on, when you've kind of forgotten them, you're going to refer back to that figure as well. Uh, the actual graph of arc sine, I don't know. I don't use it that much. It's really useful to know that it's an increasing function, though, and that there are five key points for when you actually do have to reproduce the graph. So these are all the things you'd want to memorize about arc sine. And now we're just going to talk about arc cosine and arc tangent. And then at the end, I'm going to kind of summarize what you should have memorized. So let's look at arc cosine or cosine inverse. So same deal. You want to know the actual graph. Um, in this case, the x coordinate or the x axis, I should say, same uh, division. So negative one, one, and you want to highlight negative one half and positive one half. Uh, the y axis is a little different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count by pi over sixes and only label some of them. So I've counted by pi over 6s. At the very top is pi. And then I'm only labeling the pi over 3s. 
because that's where the x coordinates are going to be rational and that's convenient. But if you look at the axis, it's really pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and then 6 pi over 6, but I reduce them to the pi over 3s. So there's, again, five key points you want to focus on. So I'm going to put those in for you. And then I'm going to sketch in the curve, which can be tricky to get right. And now the five key points that we show on the graph are the ones that have rational x-coordinates. So uh, if you think about it, you know that cosines of pi over 3 angles are rational, or 1 halves. And so that's why those are the points that we focus on. So it's negative 1 pi, negative 1 half, 2 pi over 3, 0 pi over 2, 1 half pi over 3, and 1 0. So those are the five key points you want to highlight when you have to graph it. And then obviously there are the others that we know, we just don't show them. So not shown on this graph are the irrational x-coordinates. So negative radical 3 over 2 and 5 pi over 6, negative root 2 over 2 and 3 pi over 4, and then root 2 over 2 pi over 4, root 3 over 2 pi over 6. So we don't show those on the graph, but they're definitely represented. Um, there's also a useful unit circle figure. It's, uh, there's one for each of them. And so in this case, it's just quadrants 1 and 2. So you will never get an answer. Uh, you'll never evaluate an inverse cosine and get a negative angle. Never going to happen. You only ever get a quadrant 1 or a quadrant 2 angle. And the ones that you know will be the famous angles. So you have these unit circle points memorized, so we should use them whenever we can. And when you use this figure, because on the unit circle it's cosine sine, you really want to focus in on the x values. So let's take a look at a couple of them. So these are the ones you really need to memorize, but it's also going to show you how to use the figure. So cosine inverse of 1 is 0. So we look at our unit circle figure and we think, where is the x coordinate 1? And it's this point, it's that quadrantal right there, it's 0. And we can do that for all of them, but you're going to memorize them anyway. Inverse cosine of radical 3 over 2 is pi over 6, which again on the unit circle figure is the next closest point to 0. So we're there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write down the other ones that you need to know. Um, so at the end, you might want to pause the video, copy them down. Hopefully you have them in some notes somewhere uh, from class. So we have all of these. I'm just going to write them out. And the graph, again, five key points. What's really nice about the inverse trig graphs is each of them have five key features. So um, arc sine and arc cosine have five key points. Arc tan, you'll see in a second, has only three key points, but it has two horizontal asymptotes that we'll have to worry about. Okay, so written there are the nine arc cosine values that you're going to memorize. You got your unit circle figure and your graph. So all of that is stuff you should memorize. It's a lot to memorize, but it's not so bad because it's stuff you already know in a different context. So let's do arc tan. So inverse tangent, arc tangent, interchangeable. Let's look at the graph. This one uh, is the most useful of the inverse trig graphs. You'll refer back to this when you take calculus and when you talk about something called limits. The horizontal asymptotes of this graph become very important in that context. So we have this. I'm going to dot in um, two horizontal lines. So those are actually asymptotes, and they occur at y equals pi over 2 and y equals negative pi over 2. And then divide this up. So on the x-axis, you're actually only going to put negative 1 and 1. And then there are three key points, and they occur at um, these values. And then we sketch in the curve. It's a nice smooth curve. Um, kind of feels like uh, a cubic, like on its side. Um, I mean, it's really actually tangent on its side and reflected, but you know what I mean. So five key features that are shown on the graph. So this one's a little different, right? Arc sine, arc cosine, you get five points. Here you get two horizontal lines. So y equals negative two, uh, what? y equals negative pi over two, and y equals pi over two, and then three points. So negative one, negative pi over four, zero, zero, and one pi over four. And again, that's just gonna be where tangents are rational. So we, we choose for convenience, really. There are a bunch that we know that are not shown, and those are the irrational. So really, the pi over 6s and the pi over 3s, we know they're tangents, but uh, they would be hard to place on a graph. So these ordered pairs also could have gone on the graph, but they don't really help you to shape it, so I don't put them on. So it's five key features, two asymptotes, three points. The unit circle figure is a little different 
You could argue it's a little less useful. So again, it's quadrants one and four of the unit circle. But in this case, you cannot get pi over two. You cannot get negative pi over two. So we just get within the quadrants. And this, again, you're going to think of as negative pi over two. This you're going to think of as pi over two, obviously. And you got your key unit circle points, which you already have memorized. Uh, the issue is that tangent doesn't show up on the unit circle, really, unless you uh, go out of your way to make it show up. So for these, you just want to really memorize. I have memorized um, the tangent of pi over 6 is root 3 over 3. Tangent of pi over 3 is just root 3. And then uh, the negatives kind of come in reference angles and all that. So we got um, seven things that you're going to memorize for tangent because you don't get uh, the quadrant. Well, you don't get negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So the inverse tangent of negative radical 3 is just negative pi over 3. That corresponds to that point down there. But again, maybe not as useful as the other figures. Inverse tangent of negative 1 is negative pi over 4, which is that point there. And then you've got to know all of them. So all of them that correspond to unit circle points, other than negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, because that's where tangents are defined. So we have these. So there's actually only seven that you memorize for tangent. So there's nine for sine, nine for cosine, um, and then there's seven for tangent. Well, I should say inverse for all of those. So we have a graph, a unit circle figure, and then seven of these things that you're going to memorize. And so on the next slide, I'm just going to tell you what to definitely know. So for each function, you definitely have to know the graph and what to show on it. And when you're showing things, that's basically the shape and then the five key things. So five points for arc sine, arc cosine and then three points and two horizontal asymptotes for arc tan. You want to know the unit circle figure and why it helps you out. And that's definitely the most useful thing in the long run because you're eventually going to kind of forget the graphs of the inverse trig functions. You're probably going to forget some of the values, but you'll always have the unit circle memorized, hopefully, so you can refer back to it. And then the famous ratios. So there's actually 25 of them. It's not really that bad. There's nine for arc sine, nine for arc cosine, and seven for arc tan. So that's everything that you need to memorize about the inverse trig functions. It'll help you out for years if you're going to keep doing math. Definitely worth it. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.